Hey, Nancy, I have something I need to do tomorrow. I'm going to take tomorrow off. Why are you telling me? Shouldn't you tell Parker? Can you just tell him for me? You're the one who's going to take the time off. You should be the one to tell him, not me. Just give him a call. Ugh, I hate calling people. It's such a boomer thing. Don't you take phone calls at work? I would have thought you'd have gotten used to that at least. I mean, sometimes I do, but I hate it if I have to. I didn't take this job to be on the phone all the time. I don't know why they make people talk on the phone at all, really. But you should be able to do it since you're so much older than me. I'm in my 30s. I'm not exactly an old woman. I mean, anyone over 25 is old as far as I'm concerned. And 35 is halfway to 40. Uh, you might want to check your math on that one. Whatever. It's really old. I don't know what I'd do if I were like you. 35 and still unmarried and working a dead-end job like this. I think I'd be so embarrassed I'd die, to be honest. Low-key, I hope I can marry a rich man before then so I don't have to keep being a sad spinster like you. I'm perfectly happy single and working in my 30s, thank you very much. I know this kind of thing doesn't suit you very much, but you're stuck doing it until your rich man appears. So you might as well put in some effort while you're here. And for the record, none of us really appreciate your comments about us being old. It's not very conducive to a good work environment. You also aren't going to be able to communicate very effectively if you keep putting everyone down. Ugh, are you really going to start lecturing me about this? I'm Gen Z. All we know is how to communicate. I'm sorry if you and your boomer friends don't get how to talk to each other. I'd offer to teach you, but it seems like more trouble than it's worth. See, this is the exact kind of thing I'm talking about. You're so dismissive of any attempts to give you feedback on how you can communicate better that it makes it hard for us to help you be more successful. I've heard that people in other departments have started complaining about how you talk to them too. It's one thing if you're causing problems only for us, but it starts to multiply tenfold when it affects other departments. I'm not the one causing the problems if you don't understand me. And anyway, I thought we all moved past that. I don't think you really understand the issue at hand here. Why should I? Obviously, it doesn't matter. We've moved on. And I have a date that I'm going to be late to. My boyfriend's taking me to a restaurant that I'm thinking about having cater a wedding, so I can't miss it. Wait, you're getting married? Yeah, I haven't said anything to anyone at work yet. But yeah, his dad is the president of some big company out west. He proposed to me last week. I guess I should really be calling him my fiancé now. I suppose I should say congratulations. Yeah, I really lucked out. He's a real catch. Handsome, rich, what more could you want? And once we get married, I can quit this stupid job for good. Are you going to stop working? Of course. Why do I need to work when he's got so much money? Seems like a huge waste of time. Of course, you wouldn't get that. You're addicted to working. And since you love working so much, telling Parker I'm going to be out tomorrow just gives you something else to do. See, I'm doing you a favor. You can tell him yourself. You're an adult. You can do this kind of thing on your own. I know you don't have much sympathy for those of us going through the ordeal of planning a wedding, but at least try to be nice to me for once. I know more about planning a wedding than you might think. I just finished planning my own, after all. Wait, you're actually getting married? I 
never thought someone would bother marrying an old maid like you. I bet you're going to keep working too. Yeah, I plan on it. Like you said, I'm addicted to working. Which really means I must enjoy what I do. That's so sad. Well, congrats, I guess. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. But I, unlike you, spoke with Parker directly about it and took days off as needed to do all the planning. And if anything, he was much more flexible about it because I came to him myself in advance. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm still not over the fact that you're actually getting married. Are you going to wear a white dress and everything? I was planning on it, yes. I didn't even know they let people that old wear white on their wedding. It's crazy to me that you'd even bother getting married that late in life. Seems like such a waste. People are getting married later and later these days. I guess. 35 is so late, though. You've got to show me your dress, though. I just can't even begin to imagine what you could wear. When is it? I have to be there to see this for myself. You're not on the invite list. It's a small ceremony, so I'm not inviting a ton of people from work. And I'm not sure I'd want you there anyway. Whatever! At least tell me when it is. April next year. The second Saturday in April, to be specific. Good to know. I'll save the date just in case. Anyway, I gotta go meet my boyfriend. Oh, sorry, fiancé. He's sending me a car to come pick me up from my house. Or maybe it'll be a Ferrari. Or Benz. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be fancy. Just make sure you tell Parker you won't be in tomorrow. I'm not going to be responsible for you getting in trouble for being MIA. Is everything okay, Nance? You looked like you didn't sleep at all last night. No, I'm good, Gordon. Thanks for the concern. I've just been really busy with last-minute preparation for the wedding and our trip is all. No, yeah, well, don't worry too much about it. I'm sure they'll be great no matter what. Yeah, you're right. I just haven't had much time to make sure everything is finished since work's been kind of busy. I know what you mean. I'm going to try my best to get all my work out of the way before the big day, just so they don't bother me while we're on our honeymoon. Yeah, I'm going to try to do the same. Don't stress too much about it. It's not going to be any fun if you're sick from stress. Yeah, you're right. I'll try to relax this weekend so I'm ready for everything next week. I should be able to get it all done before the middle of next week anyway, so I'll have a few days then too. That's good. I don't want you all riled up before the wedding. Hopefully everything at work will sort itself out before then. Is there something wrong? Oh, well, it's just that one girl I told you about. Oh yeah, I remember her. Celia? Yup, that's the one. She keeps getting in trouble for messing up, and it always falls to me to fix her mistakes. It's just getting to be a lot of work. Is there anything I can do to help? No, not really. I think it'll be fine. The whole department is working their hardest to keep everything on the right track. So it should be fine even while I'm gone. And she's getting married soon and is planning on quitting once that's happened. Hopefully, once she's gone, things will settle down a bit. Yeah, I know what it's like to have someone just entirely kill the flow of the group by messing up all the time. It really does throw a spanner in the works to have to go in and fix someone's mistakes repeatedly. It really is a pain. And she just is entirely unmotivated to boot. But once she gets married off and quits, I won't have to deal with her anymore. That's good at least. Well, I don't want you stressing over anything you don't need to be. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. 
I know we're in different departments, but I can probably figure out how to lend you a hand if you need it. Thanks, I might need it. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what to do about her work. She's been out a lot lately, so I've had to handle her assignments. I hate that. It's one thing to be sick or something, but just leaving your work unfinished and taking a vacation is just rude. I'd be okay with it if she at least left things organized enough to make sense of, but it's all a total mess. You know, all this talk about her reminds me of a rumor I heard. About her? Yeah, some of my co-workers were talking about it. I don't really remember what they said, other than the fact that her future husband was rich. Yeah, he's the son of some big wig company president. Apparently he's made quite a bit of money himself and is in for the president's spot when his dad retires. He's got a bunch of luxury sports cars and owns some fancy condo. But I don't really know much else about him. I don't even know his name. Hmm, interesting. Definitely makes some sense. Do you know something else about him? Uh, it's not important. Anyway, are you still planning on going to the church after work? I thought we might be able to go together and get a bite to eat afterwards if you want. I managed to make a reservation at the new Italian place by the water. Oh, that sounds great. The meeting with the priest is at 5.30, so hopefully there's time. The reservation is kind of late, so we should be okay. I hope it's not too late. It should be okay. I hear they're quick. And anyway, you deserve to take a break. We can have a nice night tonight and you can go in a little late tomorrow. I'm sure your boss won't mind. You're right. I've been working too hard as it is. All right, let's do it. Did you make it home all right? You seemed like you were in a real hurry to get out of there. I did make it home. Thanks for your concern. Why were you in such a rush? I had to get to the church for last minute wedding prep. Really? So you actually are getting married after all? I bet it's going to be a really boring wedding. You and that bland fiancé of yours are going to put on a real snooze fest. Maybe you should consider just eloping instead. Save yourself the money and embarrassment. My wedding will be ten times nicer than yours. I'm marrying the rich son of a big-time CEO, after all. Good for you, I guess. I don't really get why you're telling me, though. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you. Our weddings are actually on the same day. Did you really schedule your wedding on the same day as mine? Did you not get the invite? They already went out. I guess I forgot to invite you. Well, it's too late to change it now. It really is a shame. There's no way anyone would go to your boring, plain wedding over my amazing, gorgeous one. The difference is night and day. There's no way this isn't intentional. I told you about my wedding date like two months ago. I really didn't do it on purpose, I swear. I just wanted a spring wedding, and by the time we got engaged, everything was booked up except for this weekend. So you just happened to schedule it for the same weekend as mine. Why couldn't you just push it off? I can't have a summer wedding. I'll die in the heat. And I wanted to get married as soon as possible. Fine, I guess that makes sense. I really wonder though, who's gonna come to your wedding when mine is happening at the exact same time? I mean, I'm guessing the people who RSVP'd for mine. Besides, I gave people quite a bit of notice, so they were probably already committed to mine. When did you send invitations out? This morning! I meant to send them out earlier, but I was so busy getting everything set for the wedding. I had all sorts of spa appointments and fittings and whatnot, I just totally forgot. But I handed them out this morning before I forgot again. 
Are you serious? Do you really think people are going to drop everything to go to a wedding that's in less than two weeks? Not to mention all the stuff you need to do that you could only do with the guest list locked in. Like meal choice and special accommodations for allergies and the like. And seating? Do you think you can get that all done with this little time left before the day? I'm not worried about it! My fiancé hired a top-tier wedding planner. She's dealing with all that stuff. Don't you want to do some of that stuff yourself? Nah, I got other things to worry about. Of course, I'll give it all a look before the actual day. But I'm sure I can handle it. I doubt you'd be able to, being so old and all. But I'm still young enough to keep up with it. Yeah, sure. I really am sorry, though. You're not mad at me. It's probably for the best either way. I'm sure no one wanted to actually go to yours. And they'll get to see my beautiful white dress. Just curious. Do you know who my fiancé is? Why would I? He's just some guy in some other department, right? I'm pretty sure everyone in the company knows him. If you actually bother to talk to anyone, you might have figured it out. Why does it matter to me who you're marrying? I would think you might care that I'm marrying the owner of the company. What? There's no way. Everyone at the company is planning on being there. Except for you, I guess. You absolutely have to be lying. There's no way you're actually marrying the owner of the company. I would definitely know if he was your fiancé. I'm not lying. You can ask anyone about it. It's been kind of a big deal since I had to get it cleared with HR and everything. But we've known each other since college. And I actually started dating him before I started working here. Didn't he go to an Ivy League? Yep, and so did I. We actually were both in the same marketing class together. We met in class and started dating when we were juniors. You're making this up. Nope. Just ask anyone. It's pretty common knowledge. Why did he hire you then? Isn't that nepotism? He actually didn't hire me. His dad did. I actually applied without him knowing who I was and he hired me before he realized I was dating his son. And I've just kind of kept working without much changing. His dad retired a few years ago and sold the company to him. But he's kept his same job in accounting and left the day-to-day -to, -day to his brother, who owns part of it, too. So, your husband is going to be part owner of the company. He actually owns a majority, but he just prefers to do the numbers side of it and leave the business to his brother. Why bother working when you have all that money? Like I said, I enjoy what I do. So does Gordon. My fiancé is going to be super mad if no one from my company shows up. He was planning on meeting the owners so we can try to get a contract with them before I quit. I'm not sure that's going to happen now. Gordon and his brother have some important plans they can't change now. Well, maybe they'll show up anyway. Or someone else from the company will. My wedding will be way better anyway. They'll probably get bored at yours and come to mine instead. At least mine starts later. They can just leave yours and come to mine. I bet you couldn't stay up late enough to even come to mine, old lady. I doubt that'll happen, but I guess you can dream. I mean, whatever, it's fine. Even if no one from your fiancé's second-rate company comes, it'll be all the same to me. We've got plenty of people from my fiancé's company to keep the party high class. I'm sure once I explain, he won't even want to do business with you anyway. Whatever you say. I'll be excited to see all your wedding photos. I'm sure they'll be awful. I can't believe this. How did you manage it? What are you all in a tizzy about? 
Do you need me to tell Parker you're not going to be in again today? No! It's got nothing to do with work! It's about my wedding! What happened? No one RSVP'd! The only people coming are my dumb family and my dumb friends! No one from work is coming at all! Are you really that surprised? I even told you this was going to happen. No one is going to go to your wedding when the owner of the company is getting married on the same day. That doesn't make sense. It's not like they're even going to your wedding. Besides, this is just a half-rate company anyway. It's nothing like my fiancé's company. But even they're not coming to my wedding. How did you convince them not to go? I didn't convince them of anything. Then why didn't they RSVP? Well, beside from the fact that you sent out the invitations less than two weeks before the day, your fiancé's company is one of our biggest competitors. They're not going to go to the wedding of their biggest competitor's son. Why not? Do you know how that would look? It definitely doesn't come off very well. Especially when the owner of their own company is getting married that same day. Well, then why did no one from my fiancé's company RSVP either? Well, Gordon told me that a lot of your fiancé's employees are jumping ship. Business has been down and they're struggling to keep clients. So, a lot of people are leaving or are about to leave. I imagine going to your boss's wedding when you're planning on quitting in the next month would be kind of awkward. Also, there's the whole less than two weeks notice thing. Maybe if you'd sent out your invitations a bit earlier, people would have been able to choose one or the other. But waiting until the last minute basically guaranteed everyone would say no if they responded at all. Really? Of course. Not that anyone was all that enthusiastic about it anyway. I heard people talking about going on the day you handed out the invitations. More than one person said that even if they could go, they probably wouldn't. You've caused all of us in the department a ton of trouble. It's not exactly made you very popular. My wedding is going to be a total disaster if no one comes. Well, I'm not sure what to tell you at this point. Anyway, I don't really have time to be talking to you about this. I have my own wedding I need to finish getting ready for. Not to mention actual work to do. Bye! Why won't you pick up? I need to talk to you! What about? You need to apologize to me for ruining my wedding. And ruining my life! What did I do now? Because no one ended up RSVPing for my wedding, my fiancé's parents decided we didn't need a big ceremony, so they cancelled it! Now they just want me and him to have some small wedding in some rinky-dink chapel somewhere. And they're making me pay for all the cancellation fees because they're blaming me for no one showing up. Wow, that sucks. It really did sound like it was going to be a nice wedding. Sort of a shame it didn't happen, really. And I'm sure all those cancellation fees were expensive. Most places make you pay half or more if you're canceling that late. Yeah, like you care. I bet you love seeing my wedding get canceled. You could have just moved yours, you know. If you did, none of this would have happened. Shouldn't it have been you who moved your wedding? I scheduled mine months before you scheduled yours. And you scheduled it on the same day just to try and embarrass me. Need I remind you? I mean, I guess. You also could have actually planned in advance and invited people with enough notice to actually be able to respond. Maybe someone would have actually come if you did that. I'm sure people would have actually come if you gave them the chance to figure it out. Your fiancé is still an important businessman, so even if they didn't care about you, they might come to meet him. You think so? 
I mean, probably. But if I'm being honest, I'm not even sure it would be enough reason. You've definitely made a reputation for yourself working here as someone who's difficult to be around. And it's not just in our department either. Gordon says you're rather infamous among people in the company. They've tried to transfer you to some other department, but every department has refused. And they just decided to put up with you for a few more weeks since you were planning on quitting anyway. Well, why did no one else show up then? I mean, aside from what I already told you now five times about the invitations, I've heard that there was some chatter about your wedding. No one seemed all that keen on going, considering business is so bad and everyone is quitting. But beyond that, it seems like quite a few people decided not to go because they wanted to see if they could get an invitation to my wedding instead. In fact, I think Gordon invited quite a few of the top managers to mine, since he had a good relationship with quite a few of them from college. And it sounds like a lot of them heard some rumors about you too. After all, we all work in the same field. People talk. What did they say about me? Oh, well, nothing all that surprising. Just that you're selfish and bratty and uncooperative. And you're not a hard worker, nor do you care about your work or the business as a whole. I'm wondering if it's somehow managed to get back to your fiancé's parents. It does seem a little much to just cancel your wedding altogether and make you pay for it if they're still happy with you two getting married. There's no way. This is slander! Not if it's true. Why are they doing this to me? I just wanted to get married and live my life. Why is everyone trying to ruin me like this? I'm not sure that was anyone's intention. It's just karma, really. Hopefully, this will be a bit of a learning experience for you. Maybe in the future, you'll treat people with a bit more respect. What am I going to do now? I can't afford to pay all these fees. If I don't get married, I'm going to end up in the poorhouse. I spent all my savings on getting ready for the wedding. All the treatments and the surgery. Oh, you had surgery? I didn't even notice. You might want to talk to your surgeon. Shut up, you witch! Now you're making fun of me? No, just being honest. I don't need this right now. I need to find a way to not go bankrupt. Even after my bonus, I'm still going to be in the red. Are you really sure you're going to get a bonus? I'm pretty sure bonuses don't go out until at least next month. You'll definitely have quit by then. I can't quit now! But you've already turned in your notice. It's too late to take it back now. There's gotta be some way, right? I don't think so. Everyone's already taken over your projects, and I'm pretty sure they're about to hire someone to fill your position. You gave them so much notice, so they have plenty of time to find someone else. I guess that makes sense. Anyway, I think we're all glad to see you go. So, I'm not sure that they'd want you back, even if they had a job for you. Pretty much everyone seems to be happy to be rid of you. Does everyone really hate me that much? I mean, you cost the company quite a lot in both money and time. I wouldn't say that everyone hates you, per se, but at the same time, I'm not sure that there's anyone who would rather see you stay. And it's not like you've been much help as of late anyway. You've basically already been gone for two weeks. And the few times you bothered to show up, you just spent the whole day messing things up. I'll do better. Talk to your husband. Make him let me come back. I really don't think there's anything I could say to him, or anyone for that matter. Not that I'd want to help you anyway. Please, just do something. I'll do anything. I'll do data entry. I'll be a receptionist. I'll work in the mailroom. I'm not sure you're really suited to any of those jobs, to be honest. They all require you to actually pay attention to what you're doing and not make mistakes. 
All I can say to you is that you're still going to be here for a few more weeks. Maybe if you can convince them you're worth keeping, they'll find something for you to do. But I'm not going to be the one who can convince them. I may be married to the owner, but I'm not the one who gets to decide. And I'm pretty sure he's not going to go up to bat for you either. So, good luck. Better get to work. Although Celia stuck it out for the last few weeks, as you might expect, she barely showed up at all. Since she decided to effectively quit early, the company docked her pay accordingly, only deepening her financial troubles. With all that debt hanging over her head, she had no choice but to take out an awful loan to cover them, putting her even further into the red. To make matters worse, she and her fiancé broke up not long after, leaving her alone and unemployed. She managed to find another job to pay the bills, but her outstanding debts have basically resulted in her living paycheck to paycheck. Her ex-fiancé's company also continued to have a streak of bad luck, and soon ended up being purchased by Gordon and his brother, merging the two. Meanwhile, I began my married life. After a luxurious and well-deserved honeymoon in the Bahamas, we moved in together in a brand new house in the middle of the city. Soon after, I got promoted to department head, and the two of us have continued to work together in harmony while business continues to boom.